Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Matt, Steve, and Dean. And we just finished playing Viceroy, which is a game about acquiring cards from the center. You're kind of fighting over these, but then you're using them to build this kind of pyramid structure here. You can see the other pyramids that people have been building throughout the game. Steve's got a particularly big set of cards over there. And then essentially you're getting points for the various things that you've built in the pyramid. And the way it works is you've got a secret stash of gems. So on your turn, you look and you decide which of these cards you potentially want. Uh, and you're looking effectively at the colors here. So this card, for various reasons, I think is going to be good for me. So I'm going to go for this one. And you can say that, so I'll tell everyone else, I want the blue one. And they say... Do you Fine want anything? Me. Yeah, yeah, I want this one. Sure. Yeah. yeah, me too. So we kind of say what we're going for, and then you stick one, your hands out and you reveal. And if no one clashed, and no one clashed with me, I pay my gem and I take my blue card. Great. But those two clashed. So they will be going for the yellow card, but there's actually two yellow cards here. If any of the cards don't get taken, they sort of slide up. So potentially you can have two there. Which we deal out a new man? set. Uh, and they debate the it. I want the sniper. I mean... So they try and discuss and they see if they can agree. Uh, I but guess if I they can take the scout, maybe. So if sure. they agree, yeah, they take on. separate ones. But if they disagree, they yeah, both just the lose the gems and they have another round of bidding. Off you go. And they don't have to bid for the same thing, they bid for something oh, different. Man, but they've gone for the one. same thing again. I mean, yeah, I still want the sniper. Oh, fine, I'll take this. Yay. Until eventually they agree or they kind of run out of gems. Now, if you run out of gems, you can stick an empty hand in, and if you reveal nothing, you can take any three gems you like from the supply. So that's one way of getting gems if you're a bit stuck. So that's the first section, you kind of acquire cards. And then you look through your hand of cards here, and you decide what to build. Now, I think I took this one. You're building in your pyramid, and depending on what level you're building, so it's like level one, two, three, four, you have to pay a certain cost. Now, I want to build this one here. I'll explain why in a moment. So because this is on level two, I would have to play a blue gem and a green gem. It's kind of everything from that level and below. So I supposedly pay them from here. Now, I've got a green gem, but notice I have this uh, infinity gem. You can get these from certain cards, which counts as a blue effectively whenever I need it. So that kind of pays for the blue, and I can pay for a green, and that lets me play the card. You can play up to three cards every round, somewhere kind of legally into your pyramid, and then whatever level you build it on, in this case level two, you get the stuff. So this is going to get me five points, which just goes on there and is worth five points at the end of the game. So there's lots of different kinds of bonuses you can get for building on the different levels. So you can get extra cards. You can just sort of take cards from supply. You can get more characters. Or potentially, there were these cards which are like special abilities. You can put them in various places. So this would let me get certain tokens, or I can get four gemstones if I wanted from the uh, supply. So again, they can be placed anywhere. But you know, I said I wanted to play this here. It's because it completes a blue gem. Whenever you complete one of these things, you get to take an appropriate colored gem. And also, the number of these complete things you've got at the end of the game is worth points according to the level they're on. Essentially, the higher up they are, the more points they're worth. Uh, some cards, some cards, when you play them, as I say, get you more cards. Some will give you points. You see this red thing here? I get a token, which gives me two points for every red completed thing. And for every red, I think I have the red infinity stone here as well. Uh, there are scrolls, some things give you scrolls, and then other levels will give you points for scrolls that you've got. Some give you cogs. You know when I said you stick your hand out and you get three gems? Well, every cog you have gives you an extra gem whenever you do that. Some just give you a fixed amount of points, so this one gets me 12 points when I put it on here. Uh, so there's quite a wide variety of different things. Uh, one other important thing is you can get shields. I think I didn't manage to get any shields, but you can get shields on certain tokens because you can also get swords. And they're on the flip side. Oh, there's a sword over there, isn't it? So swords can be used for two things. You actually keep these behind here. And when people are sticking their hands out for gems, if you stick your hand out and you've got a sword in it, then you can kind of snipe anyone you want. Even if they said it, you kind of beat them and you take the one they wanted and they lose the gem. But if you manage to keep any of these to the end of the game, every sword causes everyone else to lose five points unless they have a shield to block it. So if I've got two swords and they've got one shield, they would lose five points. But if they don't have any, they'd lose ten. Uh, so you go through. There is some end game scoring, as I say, depending on these. You kind of go through the various sections here, uh, points for completed circles, as we said, points for these kind of lore cards, fixed points and cards. Scroll points, you get a set, uh, every set of these gets you 12 points, and then you do the whole sword shield thing. And then we discover, <laughs> I managed to not do very well, and Steve won by a mile. What do we think? Yeah, I did hideously badly in this game, as you can see. Um, I think I was focused too much on making the circles and not so much on what I was actually building. But I really like the game. Um, there's a lot to think about. You're kind of planning ahead for what's gonna go at the top of your pyramid and 
if you play it well, and like what I did this game, you kind of plan for what gems you're going to need to be able to build them and all this kind of stuff going on. Um, and yeah, there's lots of different ways to score points. So yeah, it's a really nice, really nice kind of, it's got a nice bidding mechanic as well, which is fairly unique uh, and quite friendly. So you can, you can agree with people before you stab them in the back. So yeah, I like it. Okay. Steve? Yeah, I'm with Matt. It, no other <laughs> game does kind of this sort of auction and engine building. You are, you're you managing all your resources, you're managing the gems. You want to play a card that get you three gems back, or you want to play cards that get you seven gems back. But if all you're doing is recouping enough gems so that you can buy more cards and build more things, you're not actually scoring any points. So completing the circles is quite key, because the circles score you lots of points, especially if you get some of these, that's how I won the game. I got one of these early on, it was one of my first cards, so I kept that card made sure I built lots of blue circles, built that card at the top of my pyramid and got lots of points for it. Um, so kind of planning which card you want. Well, I, the only card that's good for me that will build a circle is this one. I want this one. Jonathan goes, well, I want this one. Like, do I have enough gems to fight him? Do I have a sword that I want to use? Uh, okay, maybe I'll let Jonathan have this one because I think he's got more gems than me. Um, we butted heads a few times, Jonathan and I. He backed down first. We both wasted three gems, but he, I, eventually he kind of chickened out before I did. So if you like that sort of thing, it's got it. Generally, I don't, but it's not too bad in this game. You can agree and if you're playing with people who aren't being you know dickish about kind of <laughs> fighting you for things and just kind of stubbornly going nope nope not going to change your mind and if you're playing with that sort of person well you're just going to just not fight them basically not get involved with them um it has potentially a couple of cards that are not balanced um i've got the kickstarter version so i get these viceroys which have uh kind of wild corners are very powerful and then the third tier gives you two infinity gems that just seems like a super strong thing and if you have one of those in your starting hand where you haven't bid for it you just happen to have it it seems pretty good um also there's a card that steals right at the end of the game is a card that kind of swaps one of your two point tokens to their 15 point token there's nothing you can't defend it you just you can't do anything so i don't like that particular card and i think maybe a couple of the kickstarter cards that aren't as balanced as you should be okay dean yeah, I mean, I played the other route. I mean, I didn't bang eggs with anybody at any stage during the game and still managed to come second. So you can play it quite light. You can play it as aggressive as you want. You can play it as light as you want. It's quite, an, it's quite a nice mechanic. Um, I also like the fact that I think I got off to a decent start because my cards gave me an indication of the sort of things I wanted to do at the beginning, which for a first game was actually quite useful. It, by the time I'd worked out what else I wanted to do, I was already well into the game. So, yeah, nice, nice game, nice mechanic. Nowhere near as um, aggressive against each other as it looked when the rules had been explained. So, yeah, quite like it. Rating? Uh, about six and a half, I think. Okay. Steve? Played at the right speed, this is fine. I didn't like it the first time I played it because everyone was playing too slow and too think thinky. You meant to play your cards simultaneously and you're waiting for everyone else to do and people are trying to plan the colours out that just takes too slow so as long as you're playing at the right speed I think it's fine 7 ok Matt yeah it can suffer from analysis paralysis but yeah I'd give it a 7 ok yeah, I love the pyramid building thing. It's great. At the end of the game, you're looking and go, yeah, I built this pyramid, and you're kind of stacking up points for all these different things. The only thing I'm really not very keen on is the whole clashing thing, just because it feels so random. Like, as Steve was saying, we just kept running heads. I was looking, and there's nothing else that's good for me on that particular round. So I was like, well, I need to go for this one. Oh, he's gone for it again. I need to go for it. Oh, he's gone for it again. <laughs> and that's quite frustrating, because you can feel everyone else benefiting from it. You know, the, we're both losing out, and the other two are benefiting. And you kind of hate that that's happening, but there's nothing you can really do about it if there's nothing else you want. So I do think it's a really solid game, but you, as Steve said, really, you just got to be aware of that factor, and that brings the rating down a little bit for me because I don't enjoy that so much. But I still be on a 7 out of 10. I do like it. All right, thanks very much for watching. That was Viceroy.